With us, we got Mark Faber, as you say, one of the world's best stock pickers. Well, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you did call uh, the bottom of the S&P last yes, year. You yes. called the top of the market so far this year, at yes. least the intermediate top. Yes. Look, the Russian stock market, best performing market in the world last year. They do have a little bit of a problem with consistency, however, in this country. You think uh, that uh, they can maintain that strong performance? The Russian stock market going to continue well, well, to explode on us? Well, I think if you look at the performance of the Russian stock market, it correlates quite closely with oil prices and resource price. So December 28, 2008, the oil price bottoms out at $32. And in January, the Russian market bottomed out ahead of the S&P, which bottomed out at the beginning of March 2009. And then we had this huge run-up in oil prices from $32 to over 80 and a huge run-up in Russian shares. I know you own some Russian bonds. This yes. is, we're hearing a, this may be a record issue for, for Russian companies issuing bonds. A little bit of concern that, you know, as central governments roll back the liquidity out there, that maybe there won't be the appetite for these bonds. What do you think uh, is well, in store I, for us in the Russian bond market? Well, I think that's a concern about all bonds in the world, and especially about government bonds, because the issuance, the calendar will be very heavy, and yeah. will there be appetite or not? there will be appetite at the right type of yield. So if you can offer higher yields, then people will buy them no. as a substitute for equities. You got, uh, what, what kind of yields would you be looking for in Russia? Well, I don't know, but when I bought the Russian bonds more than a year ago, they were yielding 12, 15% corporate bonds. And now obviously the yield spreads have come down dramatically. I don't think that you're, very well paid for taking the risk at the present time. But if the choice is to invest in equities or in corporate bonds, they have some similar character. In other words, if the equity markets don't collapse, then the bonds can pay the interest, and maybe you will have a higher yield on bonds than on equities. Because don't forget, the equity markets last year, as you just pointed out, went up so much that this year could very well be a year where the markets kind of move sidewards or where at some point you have a 20% correction in equity prices. Sir, i got to ask you about China. Yes. Are we in a bubble? <laughs> well, there are some sectors of the economy that are in a bubble. But look, at the U.S. economy, 1800 to year 2000, you had in the 19th century 19 economic and financial crises. You had a civil war. Then we had the First World War, the Great Depression, the Second World War, and yet the country continued to grow. So if someone tells me China has a bubble, so what? It will continue to grow in the long run, the way India will continue to grow. And in Hong Kong, we had many bubbles, and they take it a while to correct themselves, and office. the economies are dynamic enough to continue to grow. The average forecast for the S&P from the economists we've been talking to, they say it's going to rise 10% this year. What do you think? I think it will be rather down than up this year because we started on a high note and uh, I rather would imagine that the consensus will be wrong. Either the S&P will be up much more yeah. or maybe temporary up substantially more and then down very hard. We did see house sales rise yesterday in yes. the United States for the month of December. That's good news, right? Yes. The the market needs a lot of good news because it's already up so substantially and good news may not necessarily translate itself into higher stock prices. You got 15 seconds, sir. Tell me where I should put my money. Well, you're now in Moscow. Go out and enjoy the night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And, uh, very quickly, you talk about how uh, the, uh, the United States can fix its debt trap. In 10 seconds, how can it do that? Uh, by printing money. Print money. Hyperinflation, here it comes. Hyperinflation, <laughs> but not tomorrow. All right, thanks a lot. That was obviously Mark Faber uh, with, as always, his very uh, unique and very insightful comments.